Taking a trip down memory lane can be quite the experience, especially when you come across rare photos like this one of a Volkswagen Beetle from the 1960s and 1970s. The iconic trio of Howard Cosell, Frank Gifford, and Don Meredith were hired as announcers for Monday Night Football when the NFL first started broadcasting games on Monday nights in 1970. They continued to announce Monday Night Football games for ABC for several years. Leonard Nimoy released several songs in the 1960s, including the 1967 tune, The Ballad of Bilbo Baggins. David Bowie was working on his second studio album, Space Oddity, inspired by the 1968 film, 2001, A Space Odyssey. The pre-World War II-era pontoon fenders with tapered tails inspired Buick automotive designer Bill Mitchell to add the boat tail to the 1971 Buick Riviera, making it similar to the Corvette Stingray but on a larger scale. Nichelle Nichols, known for her groundbreaking role as Lieutenant Uhura on TV Star Trek, was one of the first women of color depicted in a non-subservient role on television. Her performance inspired many young black girls to pursue success in the STEM field, and she was also part of TV's first interracial kiss. The Evil Knievel stunt cycle, introduced in 1973, quickly became the must-have Christmas toy of the 1970s. Ideal Toys sold more than $125 million worth of Evil Knievel toys, making it one of the most successful toy lines in history. Anyone remember the Quick Draw McGraw show with Augie Doggy and Doggy Daddy? These two Hanna-Barbera cartoon characters were a pair of father-son anthropomorphic dachshunds who often got into misadventures. Doggy Daddy was voiced by Doug Young with a thick, Jimmy Durante-like Brooklyn accent, while Dawes Butler voiced Augie Doggy. Augie's catchphrase was, Dear O.L. Dad, and Doggy Daddy often said, That's my boy. This guy's 1967 Ford Fairlane was a sixth-generation vehicle bearing the Fairlane name, with seven generations in total. In this photograph, we see the Rolling Stones during their very first concert tour in 1963, appearing alongside other performers such as the Everly Brothers, Do Diddley, Little Richard, Mickey Most, Julie Grant, and the Flintstones. Among a group of Hollywood actors, including Lance Fuller, John Smith, Natalie Wood, and Bob Fuller, Jane Mansfield stands out in this 1955 photo. She was starring in the Broadway play, Will Success Spoil Rock Hudson? And would go on to star in the film version and other movies. Nudie Cone's tailoring business in the 1960s specialized in making ornate, flamboyant western-style suits, which were popular at the time. He made a peach-colored, sequined, heavily embroidered suit for singer Porter Wagoner, hoping that other artists would want one of their own. And soon, Nudie Cone was making extravagant, rhinestone suits for many celebrities. If you were a fan of comic books in the 1960s, 1970s, and even the 1980s, 
you probably encountered some crazy, sensational sounding ads in the back of the books. This couple took a picture before their prom in 1974 and danced to top songs of the year. In this photo, we see Kirk Douglas with his young son, Michael, sharing a tender moment, despite their contentious relationship. This car was a promotional vehicle for Javalia Coffee in the 1950s, back when they sold their coffee directly to customers through home delivery. During the filming of Giant in 1956, James Dean and Elizabeth Taylor found their own ways to unwind. The film was Dean's last before his tragic death in a car accident. In 1976, a photo of a young Jodie Foster playing with a basketball was taken, the same year she co-starred in Taxi Driver, a controversial film where she played a child prostitute at only 12 years old. Despite the questionable subject matter, the film received critical praise and Foster was nominated for Best Supporting Actress at the Academy Awards. Jim Henson's successful career in puppetry began after earning a degree in home economics from the University of Maryland, College Park, and founding the Muppets, Incorporated in 1958. He went on to create educational puppets for television appearances and joined the production team for Sesame Street in 1969, creating iconic characters such as Kermit the Frog, Bert and Ernie, Big Bird, and Elmo. Anne Margaret played the role of a young writer named Kelly Olson in the 1966 film, The Swinger, where she comes up with a plan to have her articles published in Girl Lore magazine by creating a fake persona. In the 1977 film, Smokey and the Bandit, Jackie Gleason played a Texas County Sheriff named Buford T. Justice, a name taken from a real highway patrolman in Florida. Gleason's lines also included the phrase, some bitch, which was inspired by Burt Reynolds' father. Burt Reynolds found Gleason's impersonation of a Southern Sheriff both charming and intimidating. The inspiration for the film, Caddyshack, came from the teenage years of writer Brian Doyle Murray and director Harold Ramis, who both worked as caddies. Several characters in the film were based on real people they encountered, and the film was meant to be set in the Midwest, so filming took place at the Rolling Hills Golf Club in Davie, Florida. Throughout his time as host of The Tonight Show, Johnny Carson had numerous animal guests, such as a guy who perched on his head, a giant beetle, a python, an orangutan, a lion cub, a bear, a baboon, a coyote, a falcon, and a variety of talented dogs. Here at the 1967 Emmy Awards, Don Knotts and Francis Bavier proudly display their awards for their roles in The Andy Griffith Show. Audrey Hepburn was engaged to James Hansen in 1952 but broke off the relationship due to her career demands. She later married fellow actor Mel Ferrer in Switzerland in 1954, and then Italian psychiatrist Andrea Detti. In the 1963 movie musical, 
it happened at the World's Fair, a young Kurt Russell played the kicking kid who helped Elvis Presley's character. Rick James experienced commercial success with his 1978 album, Come Get It, produced by Motown's Gordy Records, and his 1981 Street Songs album. He blended funk, rock, R&B, soul, and new wave sounds into his music. These tough guys look like they're about to drop their first album, back in the early 1980s when kids were free to play outside and explore the neighborhood without constant supervision. Check out this group of kids chilling in front of the corner store in the 1960s. It looks like they might have been big fans of Coca-Cola, judging by all the promotional signs around them. Fast forward a few decades and these signs are now highly sought after collectibles, especially for products like Coke, which has become a classic American brand. Country music outlaw Willie Nelson was invited to the White House by President Jimmy Carter in 1980, and it was rumored for years that Nelson smoked marijuana on the roof with a companion. In his autobiography, Nelson admitted to the act but coyly referred to the companion as a staffer, while in a later interview, Carter revealed that the companion was actually his own son, Chip. June Carter began her singing career at the age of 10, performing with her musical parents and later with her mother and sisters in a group called Mother Maybell and the Carter Sisters. As an adult, she admitted to not being as musically gifted as her sisters but excelled in stage presence and comedic timing. Maggie Smith had a successful acting career before Harry Potter, achieving the triple crown of acting with multiple awards. Many people today may not know what a telephone operator is, but those who do probably think of Lily Tomlin. On TV's Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In in the 1960s, comedian Lily Tomlin, a cast member on the show, created the iconic character of Ernestine, a telephone operator. Television audiences found her rude, brash, and unsympathetic demeanor to be hilarious and she often commented, one ringy dingy, two ringy dingy. Oh, and she snorted when she laughed, too. Ray Thomas, the founding member of the Moody Blues, was posthumously inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame after his death in 2018. He was a multi-talented performer, songwriter, composer, singer, and played several instruments for the band. During an official visit to Northern California in 1963, President John F. Kennedy hand-fed a deer outside his cabin in Lassen Volcanic National Park. When this photo was taken in 1978, AC/DC had just released their first live album and were on the brink of superstardom. However, lead singer Bon Scott tragically passed away the following year. Margaret did not play a gun-toting gangster in the 1964 movie Viva Las Vegas, she played a swimming instructor at a Las Vegas hotel. Jerry Reed, known for his blend of humor and catchy hooks in his country music, had memorable hits like, When You're Hot, You're Hot, A Thing Called Love, and She Got the Goldmine, I Got the Shaft. 
He was also known for his trademark 70s sideburns and appeared in the 1977 movie, Smokey and the Bandit. In 1978, Devo's clever marketing ploy with an album of demo songs caught the attention of David Bowie and Iggy Pop, leading to a recording contract with Warner Brothers. Their first album, Question Are We Not Men? A. We Are Devo, made them widely known after their appearance on Saturday Night Live. Look at this stylish couple, with the woman rocking a Panama hat and a trim, tailored dress and the man complimenting her with his bowler hat and well-cut suit. Jackson Brown has had a long friendship with fellow musician Warren Zevin and even served as a mentor to him. He also encouraged Asylum Records to give Zevin's music a listen, which led to a recording contract. Joni Labini, the first female disc jockey at Whiskey A Go Go, became an unintentional trendsetter when she started dancing in her go-go boots and fringed dress at the disc jockey booth in a cage suspended over the stage, sparking the trends of dancing girls in cages and go-go boots. Eddie the Head, the longtime mascot for the British heavy metal band Iron Maiden, had a prominent role in their concerts and appeared on all the album covers for the band. Artist Derek Riggs drew various illustrations of Eddie for the band's promotional use. The writers of TV's Batman decided to incorporate the surfing craze by having the caped crusader hang 10 in an episode that aired in 1967 where he must thwart the Joker and save Gotham City. In 1969, this photo was taken of English actor Tim Curry, shortly after he graduated from the University of Birmingham and before landing his first full-time acting role in the original London cast of Hair. Terry Garr's experience on the set of the original Star Trek series was not a positive one, as she walked off in protest after being asked to wear an incredibly short skirt for her role as a secretary. Jerry Van Dyke, the younger brother of Dick Van Dyke, also pursued a career in acting and even had a role on The Van Dyke Show as Rob Petrie's younger brother. However, his career was not as successful as his brother's and he starred in what is considered one of the worst television sitcoms of all time, My Mother the Car. <laughs> 